Hey everybody, it's Bryce with LiveRVHealth.com. Today we're going to talk about fuel systems for your toy haulers and some troubleshooting tips and problems associated uh, with these systems. So first I want to talk about uh, the shirt. I've got a new idea with these videos is uh, charity shirts. So if you send me your shirt, I'll wear it and promote it. Today I have my volunteer shirt for the Pierce County Humane Society, uh, a charity that I am involved with and heavily support. And if you look down below, you'll see my Pierce County uh, Humane Society puppy. The first thing that we're gonna do is make sure the pump works. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is just simply turn on the switch. My switch is a uh, turn time switch. Uh, your switch may be different, simple on and off switch by the pump or maybe inside. But for this one, it is located uh, just under where the hose connection is. When I turn the switch on, I'm expecting to hear the noise of the fuel pump, uh, which is the impeller spinning inside of it. This way, if we hear that noise, we know it's getting power from the DC system. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And that's the noise of the fuel pump working, uh, trying to pump fuel uh, to the nozzle. This is good because that way we can eliminate the possibility of an electrical problem. In case your pump wasn't working, we probably assume it's an electrical problem. You want to look at the diagram if you have one that shows uh, your DC system, a 20 amp fuse size for each one, and look at your systems. This one has orange being at the pump station, which pump station is the gas station. So we're going to just do some troubleshooting electrically in case your pump didn't work in the previous test. First, we want to make sure the DC power switch is turned in the on position. For this, pull is on. Next, you want to check the fuses. These are all 20 amp fuses. Uh, so I look at the orange wire, and I know that's my pump station or my uh, fuel station. I'm going to pull it out and expect, inspect the fuse and make sure there is a connection there. So this fuse is not blown. It's in good shape, which obviously makes sense because the pump was run before. If this was a blown fuse, since these are 20 amp fuses, you'd be able to switch it and test a good fuse that you know is good into that bay just to make sure that it wasn't a fuse problem. You'd also want to check to make sure the orange wire is getting power from this fuse bay. In order to check that, you grab your voltmeter, turn on the DC, you touch your main neutral into the screw that the orange wire is on you can see it's 13.5 volts which is good because currently the batteries are on getting charged now we talked about the electrical system we're going to go to the fuel system your fuel system has three main components you have the fuel tank the fuel pump and the fuel nozzle most likely if you're having an issue with your fuel system it's not dispensing fuel it's most likely going to be an issue with the pump however there is a possibility it could be an issue with the nozzle uh, inside this handle if you push this down, there's a valve in here which opens and closes, allowing fuel to disperse out uh, through the end of the nozzle. If fuel pressure is getting to the valve and it's not opening, it can cause your pump not to dispense fuel. So I like to start here just because getting underneath the RV to uh, get to the uh, fuel pump uh, can be kind of an issue. It's very tight down there. So there's one quick way I use to test uh, this valve is I grab some gasoline and with the handle release, I'll pour fuel into the nozzle. Until the nozzle is filled to the top of fuel. Then I'll simply press in the valve and I want to see the fuel go down and be able to go through the rest of the hose. So as you can see, when I push the lever down, the fuel went from uh, the nose of this nozzle into the line. So good thing that we have a working nozzle, but now we've kind of confirmed that most likely our problem is in the pump. Next, we're going to talk about uh, fuel component location. As you can see, uh, bad thing about these toy haulers is they're low to the ground, and so it is a trick to get underneath of here. But if you have your fueling station where your fueling nozzle is, and you follow your hose uh, in underneath your RV, you'll be able to see where your systems are located. Here's the hose continuation. There is your fuel pump, and there is your fuel tank. All right, so here's your fuel pump. Here's the line coming in from the fuel tank, and then here's the line going out to the nozzle. So this is attached uh, by three screws, one, two, and three up here. And so I'm gonna take this off, it, off of here, disconnect this hose clamp, and I'm gonna leave this wiring hooked up. I'm gonna, might cut a zip tie right here, just so 
I can be able to pull this thing out and work on it a little easier. Um, so I'm not laying, don't have to lay it under the uh, RV. All right, now that we got our fuel pump out and a little bit easier uh, location to work with, uh, we'll go over some parts of it. Right here is your fuel strainer, um, you know, kind of a filter for debris that goes into the pump. Your pump impellers are behind here. That's what pushes it through this hose to go to your nozzle. And right here is your electrical access. Um, this is the uh, inline from the tank that I disconnected was that hose clamp earlier uh, that draws the that the pump draws the fuel from the tank so uh, one reason why your tank might or your pump might not be uh, dispensing fuel is this fuel strainers clogged I already um, loosened these bolts up just for time's sake and inside here is your strainer there's also a little gasket in there um, so you want to make sure to hang on to that and make sure that's not damaged so I'll pull out this strainer here and there it is um, you can see there's a little debris in there but that's not enough to uh, stop any fuel from uh, going out to the nozzle and as you saw when I pulled it out no fuel came out of here so it's evident that the pump has been ran dry because uh, normally if you were to open this up uh, fuel would be coming out of there so that's um, most likely the problem you can also take these i also loosen these up prior uh, to access the impellers just to, so we can check the condition of those and here are the impellers they look to be in good shape um, as long as you're not messing around with the wiring you could get reverse polarity if you switch the wires around so you'd want to um, you can see the fuel comes in through this purge and then goes out through here to this pump. So you'd want um, to see the fuel travels around the outside here. So most likely you'd want to spin these pumps, see it spun in that direction. And actually, we still have the wiring hooked up. So if we wanted to check that, we could actually run it dry for a second. There it goes. Just to make sure that... Um, the impellers are spinning in the, in the right direction and that they are spinning and these um, are in good shape they're not worn down at all so pretty much we can tell that the problem was the vapor lock the um, fuel was ran out from the tank and uh, that's why the pump isn't pumping also why we got it here i loosen these up just to show you um, so you can see all the components this is the wiring connection uh, that, that powers the pump and that's all that little access is there so what we're gonna do to fix this is, right here is a purge um, valve. And if you run your fuel pump empty, you can take your uh, 3 8 socket, stick it in here, and take this out, and you can, you're able to fill your fuel in here once you close all this up, we'll fill this up with fuel so we get a good suction, hook all the lines back up, and that will solve the vapor lock problem. So I got the covers back on here. I just did it in the reverse order uh, that I took them off. The impeller cover and the strainer cover both have gaskets, so I made sure when I was tightening down these bolts to do it nice and evenly to not damage that gasket in there. So that's all put back together, and now I left this plunger valve open, access point open, to show you that inside of here is a spring and if you push down on the plunger valve it uh, opens up allowing fuel to go into the pump now we got to remember that we have the inline taken off so if we do put fuel in here it's just going to come out the bottom so what i'm going to do is hold it with my thumb um, usually i put a cover on it but i don't have it with me right now i'll hold my thumb fill this up put the plunger um, plunge it down and allow fuel to go in there and that way you'll fill it up fill it up with fuel then i'll turn it upside down just to keep that fuel um, in the fuel pump all right now you can see the fuel is all the way at the top um i have the bolt to cover this up i put a little uh, thread sealant on there you can put teflon tape um, 
all of it works. But it's good to put something on there just to seal that fuel in. All right, there we go. Um, now it's full of fuel, and then we just need to put it back on and uh, hook that inline back up. Okay, now I got the fuel pump um, screwed back on to the bracket and here and then I hooked back up the inline from the fuel tank right here with the hose clamp and uh, there you can see it goes into the tank now if it wasn't the vapor lock problem um, one other thing could be um, this uh, hose goes into the tank and there's a one-way check valve in there and that could get uh, clogged up too so that could be an issue if you're still having issues after this um, and if you see anything different down here always uh, feel free to reach out to liveervhelp.com on the website and ask us a question we can set up a free live video chat uh, for your specific fuel pump now that we have the fuel pump hooked up we're going to test it and make sure it works pump turned on and it's suspension fuel So the problem with this system was that the fuel tank was ran dry, causing the vapor lock, uh, making the pump unable to pull the fuel out of the tank and disperse it through the nozzle. But also we've covered, covered in this video uh, electrical problems, how to troubleshoot that, uh, the nozzle, how to check for a valve, uh, an operative valve, and the fuel pump, checking impellers, fuel strainer, and for vapor lock. If your system is a little bit different than this, or um, this is troubleshoot did not solve your problem, visit labrvhelp.com, set up a free appointment, and we'll save you time and money and um, educate you on how to work on your RV. Another way to do that is to subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to leave comments. If there's other things that you want me to do a video about, let me know, and hope to see you guys soon.